All right. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I want to say hello to our Christian Community Church family, all our friends and everyone. Love you. Miss you. Praying for you. And just want to say, you know, God is good no matter what. He is still God. He is still good. I know there are a lot of things going on right now um, that people are faced with and trying to figure everything out, what's going on and so forth. But um, God reminded me of this song that really has put a lot of things into perspective. And I just want to share a little bit of what he has shared with me. Um, before we do that, I just want to pray real quick and just thank God. And I pray all of y'all are doing well. Can't wait to see you again. Glory to God. Amen. Father God, we thank you right now. First of all, we thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord God, for you just being God and God alone. You are awesome, God. You are mighty, God. Hallelujah. We thank you that you're a faithful God. You are true. And with that, Lord God, we can stand. I pray right now, Lord God, for every person, Lord, who will hear this message, Lord God, that you would touch their hearts, Lord God, give them ears to hear, Lord God, and a heart to receive what you are saying in this hour, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that none of me come forth, but all of you, Lord God. I thank you right now. I give you praise, I give you the glory, and I give you the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right, well, let's just dive in um, real quick here. Uh, the song is and it's a hymn. Some people sing it as a regular song, but my hope is built on nothing less. Now, if you see me looking off, that's because I got the song right here because I don't want to miss one part of it. But my hope is built on nothing less. Now, I've, I've heard the song, um, haven't really listened to all the lyrics until recently, to be honest, at least the, the latter part. Um, but if you take a moment and really look at this song, I mean, really, really look at it, take it apart. There's some truths in there that we can hold on to to help us, um, not just during this time, but just help us, period. So I want to take a look at it. The first verse says, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. You know, you can stop right there and get the shout. Okay. My hope, your hope, is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Okay, we could take that and study all week long. Okay, first of all, um, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood. Now, with everything that's been going on, and it's like, the Lord allowed some things to take place. He allowed a lot of our, um, shall we say, and I'm going to just go ahead and say it, our idols, a lot of things that we put before him, they got removed. When this, this whole thing about the uh, virus came forth, um, you know, we, we here, especially, you know, in the United States, you know, we're like, okay, okay. But then when it started hitting home, like okay what's going on and then um i think when it really start making an impact and people like okay hold up wait a minute when they start canceling games that people would normally go to like the nba my grandmother oh my goodness she loves basketball loves loves basketball me on the other hand i don't know a whole whole lot about it now you talk to her she will tell you but all of that got cut out okay um entertainment Different places we normally would go and wouldn't think a, a, a thing about it. Um, dance. I mean, there are so many things that got removed, taken away. You can't go to them now. You don't have that time. I mean, you don't have to um, use your time going to those things. Now you got all this extra time, so to speak. Okay, these were things that we were putting our hope in, whether you realize it or not. God wants us to hope in him, to have him um, as our foundation and to trust in him. Um, looking at the line, I dare not trust the sweetest frame. Sweetest frame. 
Now we know that there are a lot of things this world has to offer that seem sweet or fun or um, just things that you like. And if, if you look around, a lot of those things have been taken away. God's trying to get our attention, folks, starting with the church and everybody else. He wants our undivided attention. And I believe he is starting to get it in a lot of people. But let's look at that, the sweetest frame. Now, a frame is a structure that gives shelter and security. So the question is, what have you been structuring or what have we, because I, I, I have to ask myself this, this very thing, what have we been allowing to be our structure? Where do we go for shelter? What, what do we find security in? Is it your job? Oh, wow. We got people now that have been furloughed, been there. We've got people now that have been on, on unemployment who never thought they would. Okay, been there, done that. Okay, what are we trusting in? The career, as you can see, um, that could be gone tomorrow. The entertainment, gone. What are we framing our world around? Are we allowing Christ to be our frame, or are we getting caught up in all these other things? And only you and God can answer that. I, I, I've got to answer to God for myself. And trust me, during this time, really have been doing a lot of reflecting of what's important. What do I have first? Um, as our pastor says, you know, what are your um, vertical line? Excuse me. What's your vertical line of priorities? OK, is God at the top or were there other things that took his place? Now's a great time, a great season to get that vertical line in order and put God at the top. Praise God. Now, with that being said, we're going to dive into the scriptures here. Going back to the first verse, my hope. It's funny. Um, our founding father uh, from the Bible here. Abraham. Abraham had to use his hope. Abraham had some really, um, shall we say, let's just say the odds were against him in one particular circumstance and it looked pretty bleak. But yet, he chose to trust and believe in what God said. And that's what we've got to do. Just like in the verse, I dare not trust the sweetest frame. Amen. Um, let's go to Romans chapter 4. We're going to look at verse 17 and 20. Okay, so if you have your Bibles, um, please get them out because I will be going to different scriptures. So um, let's take a look at that. Spiritual hope enable Abraham to become the father of the faithful. Romans 4, 17 through 20. All right, 17 says, As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead and calls things that are not as though they were. Here's verse 18. Okay, against all hope, Abraham in hope believed, and so became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Against all hope. Right now, there are things going on. You may have lost some loved ones. Your career may be hanging on the balance. Okay, it looks pretty bleak. Okay, pretty dim, pretty dark. Okay, but you don't have to lose hope because we have a sure anchor. Hallelujah. We have a sure foundation that we can stand on. And his name is Jesus Christ. Okay. Things could be going on around us, falling apart left and right. But we don't have to lose hope. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Came today to stir somebody's hope, stir somebody's faith to believe God despite what it looks like, despite what the circumstances say, despite Glory to God. Verse 18 says, against all hope, Abraham in hope 
believed. Hallelujah. It's time for us to believe God for what he says. Period. Just, just believe him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Keep going. Verse 19 says, without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about 100 years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Okay. God gave Abraham a promise that he was going to have a son. The only problem was Abraham was old. Old. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave that right there. I, I, I think you, you get it. But verse 19 says, without weakening in his faith, he didn't consider what was going on around him. He didn't consider his own, um, his ability. Okay, he didn't put his trust in his own ability, what he was able to do, because clearly, if he's 100 years old, nothing's happening. Okay, but verse 20 says, yet, somebody say yet, yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. Glory to God. Oh, my goodness. Somebody needs to get to shouting right there. He did not waver through unbelief. In this hour, y'all, we've got to stand on what God says. We cannot waver. If you feel yourself wavering and doubting because you're looking at what's going on around you, ask God to strengthen your faith. Ask God, Lord, help me not to waver in my faith, in my belief, in my hope, in you. It's okay to ask him that. It's okay. I mean, even me sitting here right now talking in front of a laptop to spread the word. This is new for me. But you know what? God is good. And he's going to make sure that everybody hears his word. He's going to make sure. So by any means necessary, I'll do whatever it takes, Lord. Amen. And you should feel the same way. But going back to the scriptures here, Abraham, he did not waver through unbelief. We've got to stand. Um, thank you. Verse 19. I want to go back to that for a second. His faith did not weaken. And it says that he faced the fact. Okay. The fact is there's a deadly virus going around the coronavirus. That's a fact. Okay. The fact is, yeah, there are people that are dying. Yes. But the truth of the matter is, okay, fact versus God's truth. God's word is truth. So when you're faced with facts that seem insurmountable, excuse me, or that seem um, to be hard, harsh, or dark, counteract those facts with God's truth. What did God say about the matter? That's what matters. Not what's going on around you because if you put your eyes on what's going on around you trust me you will fall okay just like Peter um the incident where he walked on water okay as soon as he took his eyes off of Jesus and he started looking at the clouds and the storm he began to sink why did he sink because he took his eyes off Jesus church let me tell you it's time for us to put our eyes back in the right position put them on Jesus have tunnel vision and let that vision, the, the end result, focus on God. Glory to God. I remember a friend of mine um, gave me this little car because there was some things going on. And she had um, F.O.G. And she just put a little um, quote beside it and said, it had fog. And then it said, focus on God. So when life looks a little cloudy, a little foggy, and you can't see, Go back to what's sure. Focus on God. He loves us. You may say, yeah, sure. I'm not even working now. Oh, yeah, he loves me. I, I just lost my grandmother or aunt or, or whoever, my son, my, my daughter. Oh, yeah, he, he loves us. Let me tell you something. Despite what's going on. God said in Jeremiah, I have loved you with an everlasting love. His love for you is unending. His love for you will not die. His love for you 
is deeper and greater than anything we can ever imagine. And it's not based on our circumstances. And we've got to receive his love, not based on our circumstances. Well, glory to God. Oh, wow. Lord, thank you. Thank you. It's, it's so much, so much I want to share. But Lord, help me to just stay going back, staying focused and sharing exactly what he would have me to say right now. Thank you, Lord. Facing the facts. It's OK to face the facts, y'all. But don't just stay there, okay? Don't just stay there. You must move on to God's truth. And like I said, that's in the Word of God. God's Word, what He says about a matter. And then speak it, okay? God has given us, the Word says that death and life are in the power of the tongue, okay? We've got to speak what God says, especially when you don't see it. Hallelujah. Where will you allow your thoughts your spoken words and your actions go. Where, where are they going to go? Are they going to follow what you're seeing in front of you? Or are they going to follow what God says? The song, my hope is built on nothing less. What is hope? Okay, I know we have the faith chapter in Hebrews 11. You can go back and read that. But right here in Romans, there's so much meat in here about hope. Go to Romans chapter 8 and... Let's look at verse 24. Okay, we're going to look at verse 24 and 25. Verse 24 says, For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? If I got it, why am I hoping for it? Okay, if I have a vehicle, then there's no reason for me to exercise any hope or faith in that because I already got it. Okay, if I have a job, there's no reason for me to exercise any hope or faith in that because I already got it. Verse 25 says, but if we hope for what we do not yet have, <laughs> we wait for it patiently. Hallelujah. There's some things happening right now. God is shaking up this entire earth. And all the people there. And as things are being shaken and, and going away and so forth, what are you going to hope in? Hallelujah. Who are you going to hope in? I hope it's Christ. I hope it is Christ. And that you would stand on that. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is not hope at all. Glory to God. Let's fix our eyes on those things that are eternal, because as you can see, those things that we can look at right now face to face. OK, they're being taken away. The word of God says that the only thing that's going to last, OK, that's going to um, be at the end is the word of God. So all these other things that we've allowed to um, fill our time. Or we put our hope in. Okay. I've been there. I put my hope in my career. Put my hope in my job. Okay. It was a, a secure place for me. And then when that got shaken up. Okay. See, I've already been through this little shaking up with the job thing. You're going to be all right. Whoever you are right now, if you do not have your job, let me tell you, you are looking at someone who has been through the fire when it comes to being let off your job or, or not having a job. But let me tell you, God has and will provide for your every need. Hallelujah. He will provide. I'm telling you, even now, he is still providing everything, everything that I need. I didn't say everything that I want. Not saying that he won't take care of wants them because he, he will and he can in his timing. But everything that you need, God will supply. OK, so get that fear, get that doubt out of your heart and out of your mind. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you right now. We come against the spirit of fear right now. It will not rest and abide in your people in Jesus name. Father, I thank you right now, Lord God. Your word says that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but one of love, 
power and a sound, well-balanced mind. Another verse even said self-discipline. Lord, we discipline ourselves, Lord God, not to go over into anxiety, not to go over in fear in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God, for the people right now. I thank you that they have the mind of Christ and they hold the thoughts, feelings, and purposes of your heart, Lord God, which we get from your word. Father, I thank you, Lord God. Stir up the hunger. Stir up, Lord. Hallelujah. I pray we would hunger and thirst after your word, after your righteousness, Lord. You said we'll be filled, Lord God. You have given us everything that we need. Hallelujah. That pertains to life and godliness. Everything we need. There is nothing that God can't supply. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I hope you're encouraged today. I hope that you are just resting, resting in the fact that God will take care of you. I promise. This is not just some fluff and, and just just to hear myself talk. Tuh, trust me. Mm -mm. God loves you and he will take care of you. It's just time to shift what you've been trusting in. Just, just, just shift. God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Trust in God. Trust in God. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Y'all, His word is our saving grace. God's word is our saving grace. And if you want to have hope in this world, you've got to trust the word of God. All of us, we have got to trust what God says. We read the words, you know, we have all these little nice little cliches that we say, but now it's testing time, y'all. You know, it's just like when your teacher, um, gives you information on a particular subject or what have you and you know you're going over it maybe a week or, or, or weeks and so forth and then your teacher says okay well at the end of six weeks we're going to have a test on it okay to see if you have fully absorbed all the information that they have given you on that particular subject matter well let me tell you something we are in a test right now y'all Hallelujah. But we come forth as pure gold. Hallelujah. All the things that God has spoken to us, all the things that we've said, sung about and all of this. OK, are we going to stand on what he says in here? Or are we going to allow fear grip us and keep us from moving forward and trusting God? I, I, in the name of Jesus, we won't do that. Hallelujah. The word says perfect love cast out fear in Jesus' love for us. The fact that over 2,000 years ago that he gave his life for us. Hallelujah. He went to the cross for you and me. Glory to God. He allowed people to ridic ridicule him, beat him, spit on him. Say all kinds of false things about him. But he didn't say a word because his love looked past all of that and saw you. He saw you in 2020 with this virus going around. He knew that the enemy was going to try to throw out fear to overtake the world. But God said not so. I love you so much. I'm going to stay on this cross. So God's purpose and destiny for my life can be fulfilled and so that you can have an opportunity to have everlasting life and join me and the father glory to god hallelujah he stayed there he shed his blood hallelujah power in the blood of jesus he shed his blood so that all of us would be able to have access to our heavenly father glory to god thank you jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name.
Oh, wow. I hadn't even gotten to half of what we're going to go over, but praise God. We're going to just follow the Holy Spirit. Amen. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Glory to God. Now, despite all these other things that are falling at the wayside that you, you think you've got to have, let me tell you something that you cannot live without, you cannot do without, and that is a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We cannot live without him. You cannot end this life without him and expect everything to be well because it won't. The only way that you can have hope and, and stand is by receiving Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Glory to God. Verse 10 says, For it is with the heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Hallelujah. Y'all, it's time for us to believe God. Body of Christ, it's time for us not only to make him our Savior. A lot of us have made him our Savior. Okay, We confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus died for our sins. But have we made him Lord? And that's the same question that I've had to come to grips with and answer myself. Okay, So I'm not saying anything that God's not dealing with me on. It's time that we make him Lord. When someone is Lord, they're in charge, not us. And I'll be, <laughs> oh my goodness, honest. I like to have things a certain way and to have that control and make sure they flow that way. But you know what? It means absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing if Jesus is not the center of it, if Jesus is not the one in charge. He wants us to go deeper. He wants us, number one, to have a relationship with him. But in the relationship, allow him to lead and we follow. Ask God, what are those areas that you haven't fully surrendered to him? And begin to submit those areas to him. Allow him to have his way in your life. Allow him to show you a better way. Allow him to show you that all these things that you may have, have lost or, or you feel like, um, even with your hope, that how can I get any hope back? I, I, I dare you to just trust him and allow him to give you those things back. He will do that. He can rebuild your hope. He can restore your faith. He can give you back that job and then some. He can give you back that vehicle and then some. House, home, whatever. All these things. He knows what we have need of. But our number one greatest need is their relationship with the Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh my goodness. Guys, y'all going to have to go back and um Look at this song. Hadn't even gotten into the other um, verses or anything, but it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Maybe God will give me an opportunity to go back and share some more. Thank you. But I will go over the chorus. Thank you, Lord. The chorus says, On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Please, please, don't put your trust in these things that are temporal. All this stuff that we can see, it's temporal, it's temporary. As you can see, it can change in a heartbeat. But if you put your hope in Christ, you can stand. 
Hallelujah. You'll be able to endure the test of times. You'll be able to stand during this time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, God is so good. And I hope right now that you sense his presence and, and just know how much the Father loves you. He's so sweet. Hallelujah. Remember, dare not trust the sweetest friend, but trust in his goodness. Trust in his sweetness. He's so good. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you. Father, I know that the things that you had me to write down. I know we haven't even begun to scratch the surface with all, but I thank you right now for that person that whose heart you're pricking, Lord. I thank you right now, Lord God, for those who say, you know, I put my hope and trust in other things. And they're beginning to see and realize that all of that, Lord God, can easily be taken away. I thank you for the one who's beginning to see and realize that they've got to put their entire hope and trust in you, Lord. I pray right now. You can pray this prayer with me. If you have not given Jesus your heart or decided to have a relationship with him and declare him Lord over your life, just if you would say this prayer with me, just say, Lord, Jesus, I come to you right now and I confess to you that I have sinned against you. I, I didn't even have you in my thoughts, but I confess to you that I need a Savior. I give you my heart right now. As stained as it is right now from all the things that I've done wrong, I give you my heart. And I thank you that your blood is able to cleanse it from all wrong. All that wrong is called sin, y'all. Thank you for your blood that cleanses me from all sins. I believe that you died on the cross and three days later you rose again. Hallelujah for me. I receive you now as my personal Savior. And I choose to make you Lord over my life. I choose Christ. Help me walk out the rest of my days according to your word. And I thank you for your truth. I thank you for saving me. And I thank you for your amazing grace. Glory to God. Amen, amen. Well, family, I'm going to pause. You know that there's so much more I would love to share right now, but I don't want to overwhelm anyone. But thanks be to God, y'all. Hallelujah. The word says, thanks be unto God who gives us the victory. Hallelujah. You have the victory. Don't look at your circumstances, but look at your sure foundation on Christ, the solid rock I stand, and you can stand too. God bless you. We love you. May he keep you. Hallelujah. May his face shine upon you. Hallelujah. May he lift up his countenance upon you, and may he give you peace. Hallelujah. Peace in the name of Jesus. As pastor would say, shalom. <laughs>